<laughs> Wonderful. So thank you for attending our first digital reception and client appreciation event. It is my pleasure to host you. Many of you probably know my face. I'm Taryn Mead. I'm the, the fine art consultant, which means I sell art. I sell your beautiful paintings to the wonderful patrons who make up the family that we have at this gallery. Tonight's events will run in the following order. It should take about 25 minutes, not too long. First, I wanna say my words of gratitude for our collectors and patrons and these artists as well. Um, secondly, we will hear three short artist talks. The first one from Aziza, who I can see over here, um, absolutely outstanding artist. We have Jennifer Heine, who is our vice president, recently vice president um, and a powerhouse of a person. We have Francis Smart, who lives in Alberta, so I've never had the pleasure of meeting him in person, but I am just thrilled that he's agreed to join us today. Um, and I highly recommend viewing all of these talented artists and more in the exhibition. Uh, concluding the event, you will be sent a link to the online gallery where you can buy artwork. And uh, you'll have a window of two hours before the public uh, has access. And without further ado, I'd like to give my gratitude. So <clears throat> starting off, I wanna ask everybody if you remember this time last year because we naively thought that this flu would be around for a couple of weeks, maybe a few months. Um, time continued to march on and the weight and seriousness of this pandemic settled in and we're here to stay. So businesses around us, uh, they started closing, artists lost their galleries and we started to get a little nervous thinking to ourselves, the Federation of Canadian Artists has had a permanent gallery since 1978. What if the gallery fell while well on our watch? We wanted to remain your connection, the bridge between collector and artist, but with the moral weight pressing down upon our executive director, Patrick, he decided to close the gallery to help prevent the spread of COVID during BC's first wave. For three months last year, the doors to the Federation Gallery were closed. It had been 43 years of service to artists, service to collectors and to the public shut down. Slowly, our lives shifted as COVID dragged into the summer. June 1st, we reopened the gallery. This was a new reality for us. It's not a trivial flu and life must go on. To some, art and life are intrinsically connected. This is the perspective of our patrons whom I've had the pleasure of knowing for years now. The, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. The collection of artwork is personal and an emotional journey. But as personal as it may be, it still requires a community to function. This gathering of like minds and of teamwork is the core concept of the FCA. Last year, to everyone's surprise, our sales soared beyond expectation. We broke past our goals, not just for a pandemic year, but for any year on record. We sold more last year. It's, we're thriving, we're not just surviving. And that's thanks to you to our patrons who have given us the privilege of standing here now with these doors open and we know that we're gonna make it through. We can see the light at the end of this tunnel. So thank you. And my sincere thanks to the artists and their patrons for an outstanding year in the face of grave adversity. It turned out better than we could have hoped for. And I mean, it is a pleasure to serve everybody here. So thank you so much. And on that note of gratitude, I would love it if Aziza would take over. So give me a second as I, I pass the mic on. And as a little bit of an introduction to our artist here. Since the age of six, Aziza has been drawing the female figure but never really understood why. Growing up as an only child, she had always longed for a sister. And she now realizes that her paintings were a way of staying connected to her twin she didn't even know she had. So Aziza, please bear with me as I transfer the mic to you. One sec, one sec, we can't hear you yet. Hold on. Thank you, Taryn, for the introduction. I really appreciate it. Hello, everyone, and happy happy Women's Day for all the ladies in, in the in the audience. Uh, for, my name is Asiza. I was uh, born in Romania, and I came to Canada at the age of 11 with my father defected to communist Romania, and I grew up in Canada. And um, from a very young age, I've always felt something was missing from my life. And uh, 
from a very early age, I only drew female forms and I never really understood why until my parents at the age of 35 told me I was adopted and I had an identical twin. And I was in shock. It took me a long time to, comp com to comprehend the idea that I have another person looks like me, thinks like me, feels like me, same DNA, living on a different continent. And, uh, and I realized in that moment, all, the, all, the la all these years, from a very young age, why I was drawing a female figure, and it was the way my way to stay connected to my twin. And her name is Gina. And right now she lives in Romania, Brasov, Transylvania. And, uh, and we stay connected, we speak almost every day. We're inseparable and we talk about everything. She's my soul. She's the person I'll, I, I, she's the other, other half of me who I will, I'm so grateful that I, I have her in my life. Um, when I found out, I was, I was so joyed. But at the same time, I was so saddened because my twin always knew about my existence, but I didn't know about hers. And she even told me a story that it broke my heart. And this is later in my life, actually, like 10 years ago, I found out that my mom who adopted me, uh, she would actually keep in touch with her and keep and would actually send her clothing of, of mine that I've actually worn and pictures of me but she said she didn't want my she didn't want my sister to know about her because she wanted to tell me at a time when i'm i'm ready so every time my mom uh, my sister would receive a package from my from my mother she would actually dress up in my clothes and have her same style of hair and every time she said well, look in the mirror she didn't see herself she saw me because that's how that was her way of keeping the connection with me. So many she suffered for many years because of she always wanted to be connected to me, but she couldn't. She tried other many ways, but she just couldn't. At one point, she said she almost gave up. So when I found out about her, I was just so full of joy. But as you can imagine, I was so sad because she was kept a secret from me all these years. And I just, right now, this is the reason why I draw and paint, because I want my sister to feel significant because all her life, she felt so insignificant. She always compared herself to me. And I want her to know that she is beautiful. She's, she's the way she is. She doesn't have to compare herself because she is a beautiful person inside and out. And that's why I paint and what I do, I create art to, to know who my sister is. That, that's my story. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for sharing that. Oh Thanks. my goodness. It's beautiful. It's this combination of why you create for yourself and for someone else. Um, and there is a poignancy to your work and now I fully understand why. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you, Taryn. Thank you, Taryn. Awesome. Ooh, all right, Jennifer, <laughs> ready to follow that? I don't think so, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to um, pass the mic over to Jennifer here. And I'd love to give you a little bit of an introduction. Beautiful painting in the background, by the way. We've seen that here in our gallery once or twice. Uh, probably just once based off the uh, guidelines that we have. <laughs> um, so Jennifer Heine, SFCA and Vice President. Achieving her senior signature membership with the Federation of Canadian Artists and as an elected member of the Society of Canadian Artists, she has been showing in professional galleries for 26 years and her work is collected internationally. Jennifer is the Vice President of the FCA and we are simply honored to have her power in the corner. Can you hear me all right? I can, I'm gonna mute. Good, yay, they work. <laughs> all right, um, hello and and yeah, that's a really hard story to follow, but uh, I'll, I'll contribute my sibling story, which is a little different. Uh, thank you so much for joining us at the opening of Spotlight tonight. Um, everyone has a different origin story as to how they became an artist, and I don't think there's a typical career track for any of them, uh, but my experience is unusual in its own way. I was raised in a beautiful area in British Columbia over by Butchart Gardens near um, Brentwood Bay, 
and my mother had studied art in England. My father was a renowned um, and gifted artist known for his marine watercolors. Uh, my sister was painting from the age of 14 and actually was one of the earliest um, or the youngest AFCAs elected when she was 20. And then my brother was a renowned illustrator who's, <laughs> I know, <laughs> who's now known uh, for his large figurative work. So um, there's a fair amount of competition in the family. Um, but I have childhood memories of uh, show openings, drawing on pieces of mat board, and uh, lots of travel around scenic towns and really scruffy, obscure fishing harbors, <laughs> and uh, even holidays at the old FCA retreats when they were held on Salt Spring Island, which is many, many decades ago for those of you who might remember. Um, my father was a senior signature member, which I am now. I was very excited about that. Uh, as were a number of his friends and peers, uh, people like Brian Johnson and Dorothy Osborne and um, Alan Wiley and Bob Genn. They were all very involved in the sort of reinvigoration of the FCA that took place when Alan Edwards uh, got hold of it in 1977. But being the youngest by 12 years behind my husband, or by my husband, my uh, brother, I didn't at first really want to compete in the painting category. Uh, my skills didn't measure up to that fairly daunting bar that my family had set. So um, I was in love with sculpture and art history. So my original joy was to go towards um, curatorial studies and um, go into gallery management, which I did for a number of years and then followed that up with graphic design. But uh, I continued with drawing courses and workshops all the way through from high school and uh, may never have ventured into painting except for a deal that I struck with my father because he was taking a <laughs> tour to Russia with a group of artists, which he did every year. And uh, the only way he would let me go was if I painted as well. So I sort of reluctantly agreed and went along. But my first show was that fall at uh, the Little Gallery in Victoria. And it was a really big night. It was my first show. I sold the first painting in the show. I sold my first painting and I met my future husband. So it was quite, quite <laughs> the night in the stars for me. Um, fortunately, I was able to join a number of those painting trips over the years. And so we met lots of wonderful artists. I sort of didn't listen to my father as much as I should have, but I learned some things by osmosis <laughs> and, um, and had some wonderful experiences along the way, incredible memories. So um, around the time we were married, a number of factors led me to, to want to consider pursuing art full time. Uh, my father died very suddenly of an aggressive cancer. Um, I had some, own, some of my own health issues, but I had a newly supportive husband and his work actually took us to Pennsylvania, which, um, which was kind of lovely, actually. The, um, sorry, <laughs> we had a fresh start there and a lot of inspiration because there's actually a, a really strong realist tradition in Philadelphia, which, which wasn't existing in Vancouver so much when, when we were here and I was looking at schools up here. Uh, when we moved back to BC, we found a home in Steveson where we are now, and it's it's absolutely glorious. It, it's got a, a wonderful village feel, this incredible harbor that's stuffed with fishing boats that my father would have loved. And um, and it's got a lot of natural beauty nearby. So for the last 14 years that we've been here, my daily inspiration has mainly been walking down the uh, wildlife reserve towards Gary Point with my dog in the morning. And Gary Point is that scene that's actually depicted in my painting in tonight's show. So um, first thing in the morning, the, the, no matter what the weather is going to be like during the day, because it's Vancouver, it's quite often cloudy, but just as the sun creeps over the horizon, the, the rays are really low and they, they sneak in bright gold, unfiltered and really long shadows. And it doesn't matter how diffuse it gets the rest of the day, that first hint of morning is dramatic and beautiful. And uh, Gary Point's one of our favorite spots to enjoy that. So that's what you'll see if you find my painting tonight. Um, I started as a supporting member of the FCA when we moved back, which was 2007, um, because I enjoy workshops. Um, I still take one every year. I just love the experiences and meet terrific people. And every single artist I've studied with has had something to impart. So um, I still pursue that. <laughs> but obtaining my SFCA last year was really significant for a number of reasons, not just because of the validation and acceptance from this incredible group of artists that I've long admired and studied with, um, but also because I was thinking of that outstanding group of peers that my father had 
and all of the generations of artists that they've inspired. I still hear from them all the time, the people who, who know my father's work and have studied with him. So um, I saw a lot of that um, vitality, I guess, return to the SBA when Patrick took over. And then I've seen the, the energy and the rel uh, relevance and the um, opportunities just expand since. So I wanted to get further involved. Um, I've always had this benefit of creative people around me, obviously with this family. Uh, not everybody does. So being grateful for all those advantages that I've had, I feel uh, it's sort of compelled me to want to foster arts in the communities that I'm part of and make a really vibrant community for everybody to enjoy. So with 2,800 members of the FCA all across Canada, um, the, it's both member centric and regional, but also um, it helps set a consistent high standard and um, strengthens the, the arts community and dialogue on a national level, which is an incredible opportunity. And I'm so grateful to have it, to be able to participate in and helping the Federation out now. So um, I think it makes an or organization that's worth supporting. <laughs> um, thank you so much for all your continued support and for your support of living and Canadian art. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Jennifer. That was beautiful. I did not know that you came from a, uh, that family, that environment. <laughs> They're still out there for the most part. <laughs> Google last name, they're all over the place. <laughs> I will, I will, when this is done, I will. <laughs> Thank you, that was so beautiful. Um, that was amazing. Um, and, and to touch on your artwork, uh, we were installing this exhibition today and someone looked at it and they said it was their favorite piece in the whole show and it reminded them of a Monet. And I was like, oh. I get it. Uh, so <laughs> it's not a bad comparison. To have not too bad, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. And for our final speaker, I would like to introduce Francis Smart. Uh, Francis hails from the Philippines. His watercolor work is defined as a God-given talent. Francis started painting with watercolors for their affordability. And joining us tonight from Edmonton, he's turned into a watercolor master. The greatest lesson he has derived from his art journey is not to live in fear and to pursue your passion. Um, and I think that's a, a beautiful, beautiful notion, and I'd love to hear your story, Francis. Hello, everybody. Um, hello from Edmonton. Um, an hour, an hour later than you guys, but um, for most of you, I, I, I assume. But yeah, I, uh, my name is Francis. I'm a watercolor artist. My style is hyper-realistic, and I'm actually a, a relatively new artist. I only started three years ago, um, but I've um, accelerated my you know, my, my experience through through passion and through re really focusing on my art. Um, I moved to Canada in uh, 2007, so 14 years ago. But um, uh, ever since childhood, I was really I, I felt like I was uh, gifted with creativity. I could see uh, what makes a scene beautiful, or what makes an object, or what I see work in a photo, or or, or in a painting. But um, I, I really wanted to pursue art, but I was discouraged really by, um, honestly, my family and societal pressures, you know, um, during that time in, in even to, uh, up to now in, in, I guess, most nations, most countries, being an artist is not considered a, you know, a, um, a promising career in terms of, um, you know, having um, a pretty good um, fine financially really so um so i was discouraged to do that so but in the back of my head i knew i you know i could i have this i have this gift but um my career was led to a different path i um i decided to become um a, a chef's assistant and i was um i was uh, i was working for restaurants in um in really nice hotels and my creativity was um was tapped by 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 cooking by presenting food, and I was in the hospitality industry, the hotel and travel industry for about seven years, and uh, so when I moved to Canada in two thousand seven, that was my first uh, job was uh, was again um, in the hotel industry, 
and and uh, but life again pulled me into different directions. So um, I st- I started a relationship with somebody and I moved to Edmonton where I am now. And then when that uh, when that relationship ended, it was really not a good time. It was it was it was really difficult. So I decided to um, you know to reset my life and to to really do what I really wanted. So and. Um, just go, uh, backtracking a little bit, before I moved to Canada, by the way, I, when I was in uh, the hotel industry, I I decided to while working full time, I would I would um, I would study in design school. So I was actually a practicing interior designer. Uh, I, I I had a certificate in interior design, and that's how I learned uh, different mediums when doing my own perspectives, perspective illustrations for myself, for my own projects, and and for some architects. So I was introduced to pastels, colored pencils, and, and watercolor, and I found out I was really good in watercolor. It was the best medium that I could um, that I could do. And as you know, with um, with making perspective illustrations, it has to be realistic, and you have to really achieve um, the texture that you want to show your client. You know, to um, to show what you, you know, what the different textures of glass and of metal, wood, you know, uh, several landscapes as well. So that's how I was introduced to, to watercolor. So when I moved to Canada, I was supposed to be uh, an interior designer, but um, that led me to Edmonton and I, I still pursued, um, continue my career in hospitality. And then so when my, when my relationship ended, I decided to, you know what, I'll, I think I'll go back to my original love, which is, which is painting, which is art. I've never been a professional artist. I've never produced art, but just for illustrations for for my perspective drawings and for my interior and architecture projects. And so I decided to learn to to attend um, evening classes here, just evening art classes, watercolor classes. And um, you know, I I fell back in love with it. You know what? I think I'll I'll do this I'll do this regularly, and it distracts me from all the, uh, you know, the bad experiences I've, I've had from the previous relationship. So, so I did that and, and that was only three years ago. And then people started noticing um, my art and I was approached by, by, by local gallery owners and curators. Say, hey, why don't you exhibit here? They said, I don't know, I, 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 I don't think so. I, I, I just started, you know, I, 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 I don't think I really, good at this I'm just I'm just starting and that's basically how it started and then people started noticing and um, and I started exhibiting in small exhibitions uh, here locally and then I I've, I've accelerated my learnings of, of, uh, of my art so I actually work full-time still you know um, I, I have a full-time government job uh, I work for the provincial government, and I do my art part time. So I um, I really focus on my on my art during my free time during the evenings, attending classes and you know, looking at other artists' works, especially the watercolor masters of North America, Russia, China. They're really really good, and I learn from them so a lot. And so I mostly really self-taught besides those few uh, watercolor evening classes that I used to attend. So now uh, it's been only three years. I've participated in many in competitions here at the FCA and um, in North America and you know this in San Diego and um, um, in Louisiana and in, in, in uh, I think one in New York as well. And now I'm also teaching at one of the art supply stores close to my house, and and that's how I I've, I've started, and I'm just um, uh, really trying to continue my art in the best way I can, the best uh, with the free time that I have, and um, and I find out that um, I'm still finding out that I really have the patience for watercolor. For those of you who've tried watercolor, it's, it's I consider it really. Uh, it requires a lot of patience, and I do have the patience for it. So, so I guess I'm the. Uh, I could say that I'm a living proof of if you really want to um, be an artist and to focus 
you have to really focus on it if you really put your time and your energy and your creative outlets into uh, in, into being an artist and focus on um, on a medium or one or two one or three mediums that you want you could really learn and produce really nice art with just a short matter of time thank you so much francis uh, i think it's a beautiful story that you have as well where you started to almost distract yourself with art uh, from the pain and I'm it's incredible where you have gotten in three years like mind-blowing everybody here has to look at his painting in the show it's gonna make you cry <laughs> thank you it's it's um it's um it's, it's a it's a difficult process because I work um, full-time so whenever time I have I uh, I paint I paint like in the middle of the night sometimes maybe two to three hours in the you know at a time until I until I finish so so it's you know if 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 um if you really focus on on what you want to achieve uh, i think you can do it so excellent thank you so much for joining us tonight wonderful okay and uh i'm just going to conclude our meeting here thank you to everybody who has joined us so far and um thank you to our collectors and to our artists you all allow us to lift our heads high and we have been able to stabilize the gallery and continue supporting these artists, not just these three who spoke, but everyone who's in the show and <laughs> everybody who's in our many exhibitions a year, new show every two weeks. Um, I don't know what would happen if we weren't able to keep going. So thank you very, very much. Um, and we've been able to do this since 1941 and uh, COVID isn't going to stop us <laughs> on this <laughs> final note of gratitude. Thank you very much for attending this evening, uh, this evening's reception and enjoy the exhibition. I am pleased to finally send you the link if you're interested in doing any shopping, go ahead. Uh, and I'm gonna pass that to everybody here in the chat, all of the artists who are featured in the show. I will also email it to you so you can send it along to everyone and it will be live on our website as of 8 p.m. So thank you very much. And everyone should have the link now. Good night, everybody. Thank you.